Thank you. Thank you very much, folks, and uh, welcome to our program. It's our, our first show of uh, 1987, and this is... Uh, Apparently some just-released convicts in the audience are uh, desperate for any kind of entertainment. But when, whenever now there is a, a year comes around like this, you run into the same thing. And I was on the elevator coming down uh, today here to the studio, and uh, one of the new executives from uh, GE gets on the elevator, and he says, you know, whenever you start a new year, he says, I have trouble adjusting. He says, it's really a problem. He said, I'm still writing 1974 on my checks. And <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, only my opinion, but I don't think we can see too many diagrams of the president's prostate. I just... I don't... It is good enough. Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I had a great Christmas. I did something really special for my mother this year. I, I put her name on the standby list for tickets to this show. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Chrysler, uh, Chrysler Chairman Lee Iacocca, this is sad news. He has filed for a divorce from his wife of only nine months. Uh, that's, yeah, that's too bad. I, I don't quite understand this, but he claims his uh, reason for getting rid of her is that she is a gas guzzler. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's a brand new year. And uh, we have a brand new show, and uh, it's very exciting. It's going to be wait, different. Wait, it's going to be wait, fresh. Wait, oh, we have a wait, wonderful... Wait a second. Hold it. Wait a minute. Wait a second. <laughs> yes, Paul? Listen, yeah. you know, I know you get all excited about this new year sure. thing and everything. Right. It's wonderful, but let's be realistic. It's the same studio. Uh-huh. It's the same format. Right. No offense, it's, it's the same jokes. <laughs> it's the same show... It's, it's late night. No, 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 no. See, that's, that's where you're wrong, Paul. It's not late night. <laughs> it's not late night. It's late night 87. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. So, in other words... The... <laughs> Yeah. You're saying the old late night is dead. That's right. Brand new show, brand new ball game. Well, that's fabulous. You know, I, I got to say, I'm excited. You know, when the TV show James at 15 changed its name to James at 16, uh -huh, right. that, that is, a, is the excitement, the feeling of excitement that okay. I'm feeling. That's good, because, Paul, tonight, we're going to kick off Late Night 87 with a segment that is even better, better than the old brush with greatness. Yeah. Better? So you're, you're saying then, better than the old. Better than Brush With Greatness. That's right, Paul. Brush With Greatness, 87. We're, uh, we're going to visit with various members of our studio audience, and they're going to tell us about encounters with famous people. By the way, Paul, I thought our first little skit of the new year went pretty well, didn't you? Was, was that it? Just yeah. There? yeah, I enjoyed that. I, I, I liked your energy. I thought you did a very nice job. Thank you. I'm trying. It's a new year and everything. Yeah. Is there a Jonathan Epstein with us? A Mr. Jonathan Epstein. Hi, Jonathan. Nice to see you. How are you? Okay. Where, where are you from, Jonathan? Do you know all of these people? Really? Yeah, where are you from? I'm from Yorktown Heights, New York, mm -hmm. in Westchester County. And uh, you a student? You have a job or both? Uh, I'm a student at the University of Rochester. Uh, what are you studying? I'm a biology major right now. Uh huh. And uh, when you graduate, what do you want to do with that degree? Uh, hopefully something in the field of medicine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you, you seem uncertain about that. Uh, definitely something in the field of medicine. Uh -huh. What, like research? Uh, research, surgery, I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> research or surgery, you're not really sure. <laughs> My gosh, Jonathan. Okay, uh, tell us about your encounter with a famous person. This is Brush with Greatness. You know how that works, don't you? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Well, about a month ago, um, I was on a plane flight to Rochester, and I sat next to n the professional bowler, Nelson Burton, Jr. Nelson Burton, Jr., yeah. 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 
Yeah. He's an announcer on another network. Yeah, yeah, on ABC. He covers their bowling tour for ABC. Mm -hmm. And we talked about sports, and we talked about a little bit of bowling and a little bit about swimming. He was familiar with the University of Rochester, and mm -hmm. they have a, a pretty Powerhouse good... swimming team. Yes, yes. Yeah. Powerhouse. Yeah. Good facilities. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he left, he said, uh, I'll see you in January. Mm -hmm. And that was about it. Did you see him in January? Uh, not yet. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, and, and as we frequently do, uh, we have uh, embellishments, and I believe tonight we're using the writer's embellishments 87. <laughs> okay, uh, Jonathan, go ahead. Well, Tell us there what happened after that. The next thing we heard was the anxious voice of a stewardess over the intercom, asking if there were any professional bowlers on board. <laughs> <laughs> Nelson and I headed for the cockpit, where our pilot had accidentally hyperventilated himself into in unconsciousness. Uh -huh. As calmly as making a 7-10 split, Nelson guided the plane down to a perfect landing, ironically on top of Monticello, the home of Thomas Jefferson, our most famous bowling president. <laughs> All right, I believe that is Larry here or not? Where's Larry? Put him out here. We have a little something for you, Jonathan. From, uh... Come on, Larry. Do you have something for Jonathan? Yeah. Oh. Is it a, it's a pocket comb, isn't it? Pocket, pocket, pocket comb. Thank you very much, Thank Jonathan. You. Nice meeting you. Have a good year. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Take care. By the way, Paul, later asked me about my flight yesterday from California. Oh, I, I will. It was horrible. Did you have it? Was your flight all right? I have, my flight was uneventful. I got to hear about yours, but I'll ask you later. We just got the we just got beaten silly on this thing. It was, it was very unpleasant. What could have happened? And, and the plane. Listen to this. It was raining yesterday in Los Angeles, like the first time in since '53, I believe. <laughs> and so the plane is leaking. Now, is that a good sign? <laughs> And then, and then when we take off, it was just like uh, we were just getting, uh, you know, shaken pretty badly. Um, anyway. By the way, Dave, huh? Yes. You still think we shouldn't play the music for when the, for the, the new new '87 music during this particular segment? No, 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 no. We don't want to disturb the purity of this segment. All right. Is there a uh, Ted Donnelly with us tonight? Ted Donnelly. Hi, Ted. Nice to see you. Excuse me. How are you? How are you? Ted. Oh, from Massapequa, Long Island. Massapequa, do you yeah. you work you work you you work in the city, do you? Uh, no, I don't. Do you have a birthday coming up or an anniversary or something? Unfortunately, only three more months. Uh -huh. Three more months for a birthday? Yeah. And you know what would be a really good gift for this man if you're out there looking in and you think, what can we get him? A glasses case. <laughs> um, okay, Ted. Uh, tell me about your brush with greatness. Well. Um, I'm I was currently, I shouldn't say I was currently, um... Well, say whatever you want. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was a pin chaser at a place called uh, Pequel Ball in the I'm sure you were a pin... A, a pin chaser. A pin chaser, meaning right. you retrieve errant uh -huh. pins. Exactly. Huh? Okay. Okay, and um, what we do is, uh, when the Pro Bowlers Tour is in town, um, after the, the pros... Ooh, when, when does that happen, exactly? <laughs> well, you can't get a room in this city when it does, by the way. <laughs> when the Firestone passes through, they, uh -huh. they go throughout the country in major bowling centers, which I was not in one. We were in a very small bowling center. And um, what happens is, after the bowlers bowl for their, their small money, mm -hmm. they come to small proprietors like this, and they we lock the doors, and they uh, bowl for, you know, funds between themselves. Oh, I see. Um, a little gaming among the a competitors. Little, a little gaming. Yeah. And um, I was down there keeping score for a gentleman named Norm Duke, who's mm -hmm. on the Pro Bowlers Tour. And um, they like to play a game. They like to see how much they can drink and mm -hmm. how much uh, they can bowl and still stay in the lanes. Mm. And um, if they lose money there, they like to go down to the, into the bowling center and to the bar and see if they can make more money back at pool. Now, now let me get this straight. You're telling me that bowlers like to drink? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Okay. Absolutely. All right. Now, is that the, is that the extent of this story, Ted? Uh, I think so. I All right. Think do so. we have the embellishment there? Uh, sure, we do. All right. Um, oh, later... by the way, this is the embellishment 87. There. It is. <laughs> Stop it! Stop it! Okay. Later, I was setting pins again, and the reset machine on lane 27 went haywire. Mm -hmm. I was about to be turned into hamburger when quick-thinking Norm Duke hurled his 16-pound Brunswick bomber at the main power box. <laughs> he saved my life, and for that, I treated him to a plate of fries at the snack bar. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, come on up. Ted, nice meeting you. Thank you very much for your help. Thank you. Come on, Larry. <laughs> you have something? Oh, sure. Pocket phone. Thank you, sir. Thank you. We have time for one more of these? 
Larry, don't go down there. It takes too far, uh, too long to get back up here. Just stand up here with me. Come on, come on up here and stand with me. Uh, is there a Kathy Morgan with us tonight? Yeah. Kathy, Kathy, Kathy. Hi, Kathy. How are you? Nice to see you. Kathy, where are you from? Come on, Larry, come up here. Yeah. Just stand right here. Did you have a good New Year's Eve? Larry? Very nice. Yeah. yeah. The holidays all right? Yes. Okay, good. Yes, Kathy, go ahead. Where are you from? Uh, Sacramento, California. Mm -hmm. That's the state capital. That's it's the golden state. Absolutely. Yeah. And you, uh, what do you do there? I'm a teacher at Luther Burbank Senior High School, and we'll be celebrating our 25th anniversary. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, Luther Burbank is the father mm -hmm. of horticulture, Excuse me. I think. <laughs> The father of modern, modern uh, something, cross-pollinization. Yes. We'll find out. You know Luther Burbank. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, uh, Kathy, tell me about your brush with greatness. Well, I was skiing in Vail in 82, and I stopped to take a break, and I went into a concession stand there, and I was reaching for some chewing gum, and at the same time, another gentleman's hand touched mine. It was Robert Redford's. Oh. Oh. Yeah. yeah. It was. You'd like to hear the rest of this story, wouldn't you? Yeah. Uh, okay, Kathy, then what happened? Well, uh, do I read the embellishment now? Well, yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. <laughs> Here comes the thing. Bring in okay. The thing. Let's go. Right, okay. There we go. There we go. Uh, then Mr. Redford bragged that he could chew the entire jumbo pack of gum at once. He, he recklessly stuffed a dozen sticks in his mouth, and we watched in horror as he started to choke. Luckily, professional bowler Earl Anthony... <laughs> appeared out of nowhere to perform the Heimlich maneuver. Thank God. I kept the wad of gum as a memento of a wonderful day. Larry, do you have a gift? Yeah. Okay. You are. Oh, right. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Nice Thank meeting you. you. Congratulations on your being a teacher up there. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. Well, uh, we'll be right back for Marie Osmond after this.